Okay, Raphael. This is hot. No. Raphael's quite a knack to follow. Um, I don't think I, I feel like a little lamb in a room full of lions of artists. So uh, I'm a practitioner. Uh, I'm not an artist, but I am someone who is driven uh, to, to provide um, comfort and services to the community. And I work, uh, my la latest endeavor is a sports training facility for children with autism spectrum disorder. Children with autism spectrum disorder are uh, a unique population of individuals and it is a unique uh, area of practice for individuals who are interested in uh, integrating technology because they are quite attracted to technology. Uh, they live in, um, well I'll talk a little bit in my slides, my slides are not as creative as these, the, I, I, as I said, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed about my slides because I don't have the, uh, quite the images that Raphael had. But it is an, it's an, an epide uh, epidemic proportions right now. We're seeing a significant increase in, in children being diagnosed with autism and it's, it's becoming um, uh, uh, an issue with everyday life activities. Uh, our children today are, um, the manifestations that you see with autism are um, debilitating to our children. You can see that there is, the prevalence has increased by 289% in recent years. And they, as I mentioned before, they are sometimes, uh, they're driven to technology to their detriment. And what we have found in our practice is that it could, uh, technology can be both a, uh, a crutch for them or it could be something that drives their performance. And I'm gonna just share with you what we do in our program. But you should know that with autism, the main scope of autism and the, the, the disability that's associated with it has to do with social interaction, social um, competence. And the children that we see are often, uh, they often withdraw from the public. They are buried in iPads or gaming. And they uh, essentially are denied opportunities to engage in social interaction with other individuals. They are also sedentary in, in their lifestyles. And in our practice, we find that motor drives everything. It drives overall brain performance. And that lack of motor capacity that these individuals have um, sort of um, impairs their overall performances in other areas of practice. Of, of, of what we say occupations. So when we look at children with autism, we see individuals that are withdrawn, that are isolated, they're marginalized, they are alienated, and they are deprived of opportunities to engage in mainstream activities. And because they do that, they, are, they, um, they kind of hide or fade away into the corners of, of our environments. Technology is an impairment to them in some respects because it's a two-dimensional laptop or, or device that they're looking at and it's not feeding into their brain's capacity for learning. Living in a two-dimensional world sort of um, reduces their brain's capacity for understanding the rest of the real world. And um, one of the elements that the, uh, the American Psychological Association has introduced in the recent update of the diagnostic criteria is that they have acquired uh, sensory processing disorders of some sort. And so that sensory experience is also denied in a two-dimensional world. So what we see with our children is that they don't know how. Because they don't socialize, they don't play. Because they don't play, they don't exercise their body. And because they don't exercise their body, they don't know how to socialize. And so it's, a, it's a, a, a cycle of dysfunction among these children. But we have also found that you can utilize technology in various ways to facilitate the advancement of social interaction among our children. So here we have an individual in our facility using Google Glasses, Brain Power is the organization that designed this technology where they can use augmented reality to identify social cues among individuals. The facial recognition software built into Google Glass allows um, the child to identify the facial, I recognize the nonverbal cues from the individual with an emoji. Because they have difficulty with understanding nonverbal cues, they can learn and understand what another person is saying without their words. So we use um, uh, various types of technology. 
VR should not be applied to all children with autism spectrum disorder. There are a number of factors that you have to consider. This uh, type of technology is not immersive in nature. If a child has um, issues with uh, motor planning or motor learning, if they have issues with um, proprioception, which is, which is your body's awareness in space, or vestibular, vestibular sensations, which has to do with your balance systems. They cannot integrate those various systems. They cannot integrate all that various data that they get from their surrounding environments, and so they can fail very easily. So use of virtual reality with this population can be detrimental to their overall performance. So what I wanted to uh, point out in today's talk, uh, being around all individuals that, are, that have the experience and knowledge of use of VR is that uh, these children have various, it's a, a disorder that goes across the spectrum, as you, under, as you know, and it affects their social, emotional, cognitive, motor, and sensory performance systems. And because it's so complicated, you can't just have any kind of, you can't have a VR intervention that fits all, an all, an all, an all, um, all, all, all in approach. In our facility, we use various types of interventions, of various types of alternatives. So I uh, designed last year, I designed an unweighting treadmill that is nine feet long and eight feet wide with a harness system, an unweighting system, which allow them to go into um, uh, a, an immersive virtual reality system, although we did find some difficulties with integrating that. Uh, the, the difficulty with this is that we need to create AR environments, uh, mixed reality environments, and these kinds of environments so that they can see what's around them when they're, when they're moving. They require some visual feedback because they lack the body awareness to, per, to perform in their environments. So they require visual feedback. So the various types of augment, uh, reality systems that we utilize um, that help engage the children are non-immersive, which is a SPIVI system which connects bikes to, uh, to a computer system which allows them to see their avatar on the screen. The faster they pedal, the faster their avatar moves, and so they get feedback from that. Then we have the Google Glass system, which is from BrainPower, and immersive systems as well. So we, we, we use the uh, virtual systems to ensure, and we match it with their overall performance abilities. If they have um, poor body awareness, they can't go into an immersive world. What we need is individuals like you who have the capabilities to create systems that will, whole body systems that may perhaps provide haptic feedback or kinesthetic feedback when they're performing tasks. Those, th that kind of feedback will also help facilitate advancement and performance in their skills. So um, they lack the body awareness. When we do it um, as, as, as a therapy, we have to wrap them and put all sorts of um, devices on them so that they get the body awareness. So things to consider with regard to their overall performance. As occupational therapists, we are, uh, we are experts in visual processing, cognitive processing, as well as motor, motor um, perceptual skills. You, the use of this technology is very effective in, with individuals, but what you have to consider is that ma matching the condition, the individual, and the technology is essential. That's all I've got for now. Does anybody have any questions? Do you have a slide with your contact information? Uh, so, oh, these, so I do have a, I think at the end of the slide I have some, some contact information. Okay. But we, we do biofeedback, neurofeedback as well with virtual reality, which has been very effective with dealing with anxiety, with uh, um, motor performance, as well as cognitive performance. I'm faculty, so it's alopez at nyit.edu. Thank you.